second lesson first lesson Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 and he answered and said unto them have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female brethren had the world heeded this vital instruction this reference was made by our lord jesus christ due to the question asked by the pharisees who came up to him intent on tempting him they asked is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife on every sort of ground naturally a woman cannot exist without the man in reply christ told them have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore God are joined together let no man put asunder many married men complain that since they got married they have experienced many difficulties than when they were single they therefore regard marriage to be hellfire and trouble arena have you examined yourself carefully that you have not overstepped this divine rule for marriage can you say of a truth that you are not licentious men of old were fully matured before going into marriage some live up to 70 years before considering this most important contract today young men and women even before the age of puberty of puberty plunge themselves into this serious yet divine assignment which is marriage people of old were not privileged to see our lord jesus christ and of course his perfect blood was not poured at that time for them yet they sanctified themselves and treated marriage as a sacred by following the laid down rule of god today people ask why the men of old live longer than those of today you have heard of people like adam he lived 930 years abraham lived 315 years and a host of others the people of old live longer because they followed the ordinances of god and the people today die young because they overstep the boundaries of God. You have now heard of Noah, how old he was. His days amounted to 950 years, and he married only one wife. The eight souls who were saved from the deluge were all monogamous. They were as follows. There are Noah and his, his wife, Noah's three sons and their wives respectively. In my whole existence, I have never experienced mass polygamies as in this generation. You have averted the divine law of God as in respect of marriage. That is why you do not have blessing and peace in your life and you do not live long God as ordained by God there was no polygamy in the ark all polygamists were outside the ark and they were destroyed by the deluge the eight souls who were walking in the commandments of God were preserved to form the nucleus of this generation 
Do you resemble them? Do you resemble Noah? And what about Lot? He married only one wife. The Bible record shows that his only wife, because of disobedience, became a pillar of salt during their escape from their escape from Sodom. What about Joseph? Through whom the Israelites were rescued? He had only one wife. Today, many parents complain of lack of respect from their children. They talk about children's delinquency and disobedience. Of course, you are reaping what you sow. Do you yourself obey God? What about his divine instruction on marriage? One wife, one husband. You are the cause of the establishment of juvenile courts for your obstinate children because you marry more than one wife. This is not a new teaching or doctrine. It is not from Moses or angels or from Christ, but just as Christ put it, from the beginning, it was not so. When people ask you why they have wars and suffering and are suffering, tell them that it is because of marrying more than one wife and is and is because of sexual immorality no one can enjoy marriage whether you are white or black if you violate this divine rule of one husband one wife this is why you have broken homes divided household lack of peace hatred enmity separation, divorce, fighting, quarreling, and death. God knows you up to the day that you keep to the rules of marriage and remain morally clean. But from the day you multiply wives and become loose, you are separated from God and you have become a rebel. Consider the obedience in the young boy Isaac. He was very humble and obedient to the father even to the point of death. Abram led his only son to offer as a sacrifice. The boy followed him even when it became known to him that there was no sheep for the sacrifice other than him. The altar was set. Isaac's hand and foot were bound with no difficulty at all. And Abraham put out his hand and took a sharp slaughtering knife to kill his son. What a fearful phenomenon. Yet Isaac was calm and unruffled. Can you compare such obedience with that of your children today? Not at all. Your son would have started fighting with you and have you killed instead? The whole world is in a dilemma. That is why I continue from day to day to teach you. I know with God all things are possible. Let us recall the outstanding quality of humility and obedience that was in Isaac when he had attended the age of maturity he obeyed his father by not taking a wife from the daughters of the Canaanites but waited on his father to make the choice for him Abram had one of his servants to swear to him that he would not take a foreign wife for his son, but the servant said to Abram, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I need bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? That was in Genesis chapter 24 verse 5. Abram said to him, the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my 
father's house and from the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angel before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence that was in Genesis chapter 24 verse 7 you must know that Isaac had no courtship with the girl in question. He had no knowledge about her. The servant of Abraham went out for the search of a wife for Isaac. And it came to pass that the first girl they found was Rebekah, the cousin of Isaac. The record says the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin which no man had known negotiations were reached and rebecca was brought to the young man isaac they were joined in marriage for life what of your own case is it in this manner you can see the truth in this matter from the beginning what you are now seeing was not so in marriage. God created male and female. There was no room for fornication and adultery or for people to seize with sexual heat. Not at all. Nevertheless, because of the prevalence of fornication, let each man have his own wife and each woman have her own husband so that you may have God's approval and so that his face may shine unto you. Pay attention, you lustful men and argumentators of this generation. Pay attention to the second Bible lesson. Second Bible lesson. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Brethren, this is the voice of the Lord. One man, one woman. There are people who have not attended school or church but I've just been keeping to this rule of conduct naturally. Such ones have seen God's favor and his kindness. They flee sexual immorality and lawlessness. They by themselves do not observe this rule as a law given by God but as, no, as, but as moral goodness. Those that obey this law live happily, whether they have food to eat or not. Their children are disciplined and very obedient. Such people cannot offer any reason why they are peaceful, happy, and so contented. The simple reason is that they keep to this moral instruction from their Creator God. You have heard that judgment will commence from the house of God. Now, God, this is Son, and the Holy Spirit are here for the judgment. For this reason, you are equipped for the impending judgment. Therefore, tell the world about this, whether you are a millionaire, or a head of state, or a prime minister, Whatever you are, and whosoever you may be, you must keep to this code of marriage conduct. Be you a bishop or a pastor or an apostle or an elder, spirited children or just a member, your entitlement is one wife, one husband. Anything contrary to this is fearful expectation of judgment and condemnation it is true that you have gone astray therefore take 
the initial step, a reverse to the instruction of God. Practice it. It is said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If you choose to be celibate and able to control and contain, this is better. But if you cannot contain, it is better to take a wife than to be burned with passion. Can you tell me why Christendom preaches that only the bishop should be a husband of one wife? Here, the Holy Scriptures say, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let it become known to all the inhabitants of the earth, the churches of Christendom, the pagans, the religious organizations, the institutes of learning, that this is God's standard of marriage. One man, one woman is the ratio. There are some people who pretend to be celibate and parade a, sing, and parade a single man and woman, but very licentious and suffering from ma mania. God will judge them. Such ones must suffer as murderers. What you call boyfriend or girlfriend is a fornication in this in disguise. This is not marriage at all. This is where you put yourself into fire. What then is adultery? Adultery is this is sexual infidelity of a married person with another married person. You can run to whatever. You can run to wherever you like, but bear in mind that God will judge you. What you are toying with is something very sacred before God. If a man would not leave his father and his mother and be joined to a wife, how would this scripture be fulfilled? And you women who refuses to marry and pretend to be single, do you not know that you have violated God's law by acting contrary to God's arrangement? You cannot escape punishment. Similarly, a man who says he does not want any woman in his house but continue to toy with sexual immorality cannot escape God's punishment. For God had so ordained that for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Take note, the two, not the three, nor the four or more, Sexual union with any woman cannot be interpreted to mean this oneness spoken about. You cannot say that you got married to two women the same day. That one you first married remains your legal wife forever. This is the only one that you become one flesh with. It is written, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted me, neither tempted he, any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lusts are conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That was in James chapter 1 verses 13 to 15. Brethren, the lust that is lack of self-control Draw you out to fall. Do not follow the example of the Israelites. They were punished because immorality was great. This generation is very lucky, you know. 
because they have been warned of the impending judgment. Have you not seen that this law about marriage being so expounded is one of those things that Christ had but could not reveal to his disciples for they were not able to contend? Solomon married many wives. But only his first wife was his legal wife. He suffered because of having multiple wives to himself. And adage has it that what is sweet in the mouth of the sick person is what he will eat and die. Since the world takes pleasure in immorality and loose conduct, they must also meet their doom there. Yes, that is why they are suffering today. Let everyone take to heart this instruction. Flee immorality. Escape the punishment ahead by keeping to God's instruction. Now, there are those who turn their ears to this vital warning and they are fitted with disgrace, shame, and suffering in their lawless exercise. There are two conditions now for you. If you are sure that you were ordained to remain single or to live the life of celibacy, be faithful to that course. And if you are not in the, in the group, do not deceive yourself. Marry only one wife. If your wife sleeps in death, this is another ground to take another one wife. In the case of a man and in the case of a woman, she can seek for one husband. But as long as you have left your father and mother and joined to a wife, whether the wife is bad or otherwise, you are not authorized to take another wife. There is no room for testing ground. The same thing applies to women. Whether the man is poor or sick or is discovered to have natural weaknesses, they shall not form any ground to look for another husband. Remember that the wife does not have any authority over, over her own body but her husband does. Likewise also the wife does to her husband. Do not be demanding from each other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency, Remember, the body belongs to the Lord, and as you know, care must be given to what belongs to another person. Our Lord Jesus Christ, being the head of you, too, has come now to inhabit the body, his own house, his dwelling place. He expects you to sanctify it and to meet you in peace. Your body is for the Holy Spirit to dwell. He is here. Would you allow him to dwell in his house? Of course, it is natural that a house owner has the right to occupy his house. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Food for the belly and the belly for food but God will bring both of them to destruction. Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, the Lord, and the Lord for the body. There is absolute need for self-control in this respect. 
Adam and Eve, after they had five children, prayed to God that what they had was just enough. That was why they lived so long and thereafter continued living together as brother and sister. This is not the case with you, you who claim to have only one wife. That one wife is subjected to conjugal intercourse, which is fornication and adultery. Do you treat her as your flesh? Do you not deprive her right? Sometimes, without her consent and under severe stress, God is not a respecter of persons. God is here to save obedient mankind. From today, let everyone who cannot control his or her heart marry one wife and to only one husband. Once again, I repeat, a polygamist, a fornicator, an adulterer, an adulterer will never escape God's judicial decision. Ignorance of the law is no excuse from punishment. God's anger is blazing. His judgment is ready. That is why this message is given to all who love life and would want to see good days. You are forewarned. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. To the woman, I say, any woman who cannot control her heart let her have one husband. God loved the world so much, he does not want you to perish. As the day of judgment is approaching, you are warned so that you may not be caught unaware. A word of advice to those intending to marry. Before you marry, Make sure that you are not a second husband or a second wife, otherwise you will marry trouble. May we have the golden text read again. Golden text, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Brethren, out of the mouth of the three witnesses, a case is established. There are more than two witnesses for this cause. Therefore, it is established. The kingdom of God is not eating or drinking or marrying, but righteousness and peace. The parallel is very conclusive because Eve came out of Adam and Christ came out of Mary. Therefore, you are not to join yourself with a harlot in fornication, nor to another married person in adultery. You must be joined together in harmony, in peace, in happiness, in love, in mercy, and cordial wedlock which is grounded in God's righteousness. At the beginning when God created Adam he caused a deep sleep on him and he slept and God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and from the rib he took from man God made the woman Eve. For this cause, man and woman must dwell together as one flesh. If you are a man, you can only perform the duties of a man, but not of the woman, and so does the woman. However, some women, because of their education or status in life, flippantly claim to stay without any man. Or, the, or, or feelings for any man. Others claim to perform that which a man can do. 
they are deceiving themselves. A woman is just a woman and nothing more. Stop deceiving yourself. Look for a man now when it is not late. Brethren, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.